Hey everybody, what's up today? Just sitting out here enjoying this beautiful November day. Um, man, it's still here in Missouri, you know, it's still pretty warm. You know, we've still been getting 70 degree temperatures. Um, I've been having shorts on still. Um, I know it's fixing to come to an end, but I'm sort of enjoying it right now. But hey, today's topic is I just want to talk a little bit about uh, lake quality, lakes around the country, what I think is the best and the worst lakes in the country. And I think it's going to surprise you a little bit on there. I've, you know, I've had a chance to to fish, man, probably 90% of the, of the of the major lakes in, across the country. The only ones I haven't spent a lot of time on are the ones out west, you know, simply because we just, all the tournament circuits I've fished across the years, uh, we just haven't been out there a whole lot, you know, other than like Lake Mead, fished Lake Havasu a few times. Um, so it's, you know, I, that's the only place that I haven't really been. But, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, hey, man, this is the best lake in the country or this place is tough and that type of stuff. But, you know, from my perspective, all the years of, that I've been fishing, you know, I have a different set of standards on what I consider a good lake. Um, first of all, people get, uh, they, they sort of get distracted a little bit about trying to classify a lake, how good it is based upon tournament results. And most of the time, the tournament results that they base a lake's fishing quality on is what the winning weight is. And that's the wrong way to look at it. In a professional tournament, if you're fishing whatever professional, even a AAA circuit, the quality of a lake should be judged by what the bottom 25% in the field catches. Because the bottom 25% of the field is more likely to be, uh, you know, in tune with what the average bass angler in the in the United States as far as their ability and skill levels are. I mean, when you're talking about, you know, what it takes to win tournaments or finish in the top 25, you're talking about what it takes for the best anglers in the world to do that. And it's sort of be the same within golf. You can't compare what the top, you know, 25 pro golfers, you know, shoot on a, in a given tournament based upon the bottom ones. So, first of all, the things you have to look at on when you're determining the lake quality is, you know, what, what are the guys at the bottom of the field catching? Because that tells you the productivity of the lake in terms of numbers and size. And it's a really, it's a really accurate description on that. Secondly to that, another thing that I consider on the lake quality is how fishable it is as far as how it spreads the anglers out. I mean, a lot of these lakes, I mean, you hear a lot of times about Lake Fork, you know, in Texas, you know, where they're having the Bassmaster this week being one of the best lakes in the country. Lake Fork is a tough place to fish. I mean, I, I've been down there quite a bit. If you've ever been there before, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly small lake. It's usually always top heavy. If you look at the weights, it's, it's not like everybody catches them. There's just a handful of guys that usually catch those big giant weights and everybody else sort of struggles. Go to Bassmaster.com right now and look at the weights at the Toyota uh, tournament going on there right now. Look at the bottom 25% of the weights and that'll give you an accurate description on how tough Lake Fork is. And it's sort of like that with any lake across the country, you know. So um, I think a lot of lakes that get a, a, a reputation for being really good are overrated and ones that have a reputation for being bad or not. But when I determine the best lakes in the country, it's not just by fishing quality, it's everything else that goes with that. It's the aesthetics of the lake, you know, it's what it feels like to be on to be on the lake, how pleasant it is or not. Um, you know, for example, you know, if you fish, if you're fishing the Detroit River uh, that connects Lake Erie and, and uh, Lake St. Clair up there, yeah, th there's some good fishing in the Detroit River, but you're basically fishing in the middle of a city. You've got concrete seawalls, you've got planes, you've got noise from traffic all that type of stuff. It's just not a pleasant place to fish. But if you go out to a lake like like uh, Lake Mead, you know, run up into some of the upper Colorado River portions of the lake, you know, the, the, even though the fishing's tough, the remoteness and the scenery and the environment that you're in is so therapeutic and healing. It gets a lot of bonus points in, in, my, in my book. But just for me, you know, as far as the lakes that I think are, you know, probably, you know, what, what I would put my top three lakes in the country, you know, as far as everything, considering that around, um, it would probably surprise you a little bit. I mean, I'd probably, you know, a lot of people would probably wouldn't agree with that. I think the best fishing lake in the country is probably Lake St. Clair. I think there's more three to five pound smallmouth bass in that fishery than any place in the country. 
On top of that, it fishes really big. I mean, you can spread out in it. It's got a lot of water. Um, it's got a short season, so those fish tend to stay aggressive all year long. It's not like people pound on them all year long. So it's, it's, it's hard to beat like St. Lake St. Clair for a fishery. Um, second to that, another lake that I would, you know, highly recommend is like uh, Bull Shoals Lake uh, on the Arkansas-Missouri border. Giant lakes, 60,000 60, acre lake or so. It's fairly remote, um, doesn't get a lot of fishing pressure. There's a lot of good fishing from mixed species on that. It's a beautiful lake too. It's entirely no shoreline development on the lake. So um, from that standpoint, I would consider that a real good one. And my third lake would be a toss up between Lake Mead and Lake Powell. Um, tough fishing on both of those lakes, but the aesthetics and the environment and the remoteness of those lakes are just unbelievable. It's like fishing, catching them out there is just a bonus, you know, to actually being on the water there. It's just really beautiful. The lakes that I don't like and the lakes that are the most highly overrated lakes, number one is, and don't take this personal if you, if you live down there or are on those lakes because you know what I'm talking about, is any TVA lake. Chickamauga, Kentucky Lake, Pickwick, uh, Gunnersville, all those type of lakes. Yeah, the, there's good fishing that's there, but those places are just beat to a pulp. I mean, there's tournaments constantly there. There's high quality fishing pressure there. There's, it's, they're, all of them are full of community holes that people wind up on. It's, they're frustrating places to fish, especially during, you know, from May until the fall because, you know, people wind up on all these community holes. I just do not like fishing those type of bodies of water, you know, where everybody's on top of each other and, uh, you know, the lakes just get completely pounded on top of that. Uh, another lake is one of the most overrated lake in the country is uh, Lake Okeechobee. Okeechobee, yeah, it's, it's, it's got some incredible fishing at times in there, but the amount of water on Lake Okeechobee is tiny that is productive. It wasn't like that 30, 40 years ago before all the nutrient overloads and a lot of the, the point source pollution took a hold of the lake. It fished a lot bigger, but right now, um, Okeechobee fish is just a, it's, it's, there's like 5% of the water on the lake that's any good. And that's not to take anything away from Lake Okeechobee because of that 5% of water, you know, when you get on at the right time, it can be incredible fishing. But I, I think a lot of those Florida lakes, uh, in general tend to get overrated because they put out big fish and anytime you put out lakes that have big fish in them um, everything else tends to get overlooked the overall quality of the fishery tends to get overlooked the water quality and all, and all that type of stuff so um you know basically the gist of what i was talking about here in the in the topic of this youtube video when you're when you're talking about what's the best lakes and what's the the worst lakes in the country I'm always thinking in terms of a well-rounded fishery. Fishing, the fishing productivity and quality is one aspect of that. I judge a lake's, like I said, its ability to, to not only put out numbers and size for everybody, not just like the top 25%, but for everybody that goes there. They're, they're, the fish are easy to catch. There's lots of areas that you can spread out in. People are not on top of each other. There's not a lot of shoreline development. You know, aesthetically, it's a really pleasing environment to be in. So anyway, that's just my take on it. I'm sure everybody's, a lot of people probably disagree with that. Everybody's got their favorite lakes and that's fine. But for me, my favorite thing fishing is getting out there, not seeing another boat on the water all day long, seeing lots of wildlife, catching a few bass, um, and, you know, just really, you know, being in an environment that just a really pure natural environment. That's my favorite way to catch them. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good weekend. We'll check in with y'all later on. See you.